Morning, but we start with a very special first guest, former safety. I'm so excited about this nine-year NFL veteran, Patriots, Panthers, and the Indianapolis Colts. Of course, you can hear him on his Man to Man podcast, which you can hear all over the place. And he is a fan duel partner that you can see, hopefully, right here every week this season. If I don't scare him away, please welcome Formula One enthusiast Ooh. Darius Butler. Hello. Yeah. Hello, Kay. Good to see you. It's been a minute. Yeah. Uh, Darius, I literally don't recognize you without that Marlins hat. What is going on? You know, I had to switch it up. A lot of people don't recognize me without a hat, so I had to switch it up, take it off for today for your, sh your show. But I'm uh, congratulations on your new show as well. But I'm happy to be here. I'm fun to be here. One more sleep till football. Can't wait. I cannot wait either. And you're busy. You got ESPN. Go you, got a lot, you got a lot going on. You got, uh, I think, Italy F1. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But we got to hit the headlines for the people out there. You guys can tweet the show. Tell us what you want to hear about. But Darius, you were once upon a time Tom Brady's teammate up in New England. Weird offseason, to say the least. I did think it was kind of crazy to read that Todd Bowles was asked if Brady was all in, which, of course, he brushed off. What are your thoughts? Do you have any doubts? I mean, no doubts. We're talking about Tom Brady. Um, like he said, he's 45 years old. Um, no one else. I actually had a, a teammate in his 40s, Adam Vinatieri, and nobody would question Adam about, you know, his preparation or what he had to deal with in the offseason. And Tom Brady, you know, that's literally the greatest uh, of all time. Uh, obviously, I had to take some time away. Um, but when he got that, got back in the building, I'm sure he picked up right where he left off. All his teammates have faith in him, trust in him. Same with the coaching staff. He is a coach on the field. So no no doubts about time at all going into this season. I think the Bucks will do what they're supposed to do. They'll compete to win every game. So I know if I'm in that locker room with Tom, I have no issues with him taking that little break. And I'm sure he'll be the same Tom that we saw last year, which is you know, ridiculous at 44, leading the league in almost every quarterback metric there is. So um, he's, a, he's a unicorn. So there's no, no questions, no doubts with him at all. It's impossible to know. Uh, he's the only one that knows if he's all in or not. We'll see how it plays out on the field. I do hate that. Of course he is. If, even if he is all in, he's 45. He could be mentally there, and it could, you know, his body eventually could fall apart. It could be the offensive line. Like, back up in New England, he could tie his shoes behind that offensive line. That might not be the case this year. So even if his level yeah. of play falls a little bit, as it should, because he's, you know, strong-arming father time, people could still point to that and say he's not all in. So I hate, you know, you, you, have, you open yourself up to perception when you don't go to OTAs, when you're, you know, uh, in Qatar on camels taking selfies or taking time, whatever you're doing. He's dealt with distraction, though, Darius, so much in his career. Deflategate, family, we saw he won us. You know, yeah. he's, he's always sort of made it. So whatever might be going on, I have no concern. But I do think at some point the level of play has to go on and, go, and sort of go on decline naturally. Are you worried about that at all? Sean Peyton yesterday said it's the Saints that are going to win this out, then the Bucks. What are your thoughts? No, nah, I mean, I'm not worried about it, that at all. You know, I, as a kid, literally, I watched Tom Brady growing up playing, winning Super Bowls, went in, played with him for a couple of years, left him, got cut from New England, had a nine-year career, had been retired for five years, and this dude is still in the MVP conversation. Like, I mean, Father Time is – a million thirty seven and one <laughs> right now with Tom. So I got I got no doubts about him. He uh, he's a he's a he's a he's brilliant at eliminating distractions so and taking care of what's in front of him. Being taking that next step every day in practice, the preparation is it no doubts about twelve at all. Come on, Kay. What are you, I mean, you, know, you've but been you, around the game long when, enough? What but, are we talking but about? But tell here? me when does it how does it end? How does it end? On his terms? I mean I, I hope so. I thought it ended last year, honestly, but I mean, it's, he's, it's going to end on his terms. I think this will be most likely his last year. Obviously, he's got the TV deal, um, you know, lined up already. Who knows what's going on, you know, at home as far as I'm sure his family, you know, we're kind of excited maybe that he'll be retiring. Yeah. So, I mean, your guess is as good as mine when it is. I think he said he wanted to play until 45 or 50. Who knows? But he take care of his body. Um, he's playing at a high level. So maybe I, I see this year as really being uh, his last ride, though, on, on the football field. Well, that'll be sad to see. We've got to enjoy every moment. Big game against the Cowboys to kick off the 2022 season. All right, from a from an OG to a young cat, let's talk about Trey Lance here. He was named the starting quarterback for the Niners. Are people overblowing this? If you're in that locker room, how messy do you feel like this will get? I mean, that's tough. Uh, I, you know, nine years, 
been in nine different locker rooms, but uh, I've never been in that 49ers locker room. Everyone is unique. Obviously, there were teammates last year, Trey Lance, Jimmy G. Um, Trey Lance, I mean, Jimmy G was still the guy, but you know, when you draft the guy number three overall, you trade all those assets to get him, he's going to play at some point. He's going to be your future. Um, the, the GM and the head coach, they're locked up long term. But if he comes out and struggles early on in the season, you know, five, six games into it, that locker room is going to start looking around because we're seeing Jimmy G practicing. You know, he'll probably be on the scout team going against the first team defense. And you'll see, you know, that's a guy you've won with and you're going with your future, which is cool if you're in the front office or you're a coach. But as a player, you know how precious, you know, every year is out there. So um, it's harder to trust that process when you're a player. And it's, it's almost impossible not to look around and say, hey, you know, we know we have a guy we can win with. But uh, Trey Lance is a reason they traded all those assets and jumped up to number three to draft him. Uh, but he hasn't played. He hasn't played a lot in this NFL level. So it's going to be a learning curve. I expect him to struggle early. Uh, but hopefully he shows improvement and get better week by week. And um, the Niners got to stick with him. But it's, it's a very... Very, very weird dynamic um, in that locker room. Couldn't imagine being a teammate in there. And now Jimmy G, you know, he's, he's on a one-year deal, basically. No trade clause, so he will be right. there. So now Trey, you know, he kind of got to look over his shoulder all year. And, it, and all those quarterbacks last year, they struggled, you know, outside of probably yeah. Mac Jones. But Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, uh, Davis Mills had a decent year. Justin Fields struggled. You know, all those guys struggled. So I expect Trey Lance to have some sort of struggle, at least at the beginning of the year. But uh, hopefully his talent kind of takes over. It's not, a, it's not fair or reasonable to expect him to not struggle. He has less experience than everybody else. He's going to have those rookie problems. And you're saying that you've never been in that locker room. Joe Staley was for 13 years, and he was on local radio yesterday. And I thought it was so interesting because he, you know, he admitted, like, there's going to be struggles. And if you're in the locker room, you're saying, we have a Super Bowl team. Why are we waiting to develop yeah. a quarterback if you have a guy that's taken us there? Like, we want to win a Super Bowl. So I thought it was interesting about the players. I will say this, and I, like, I don't know if I'm being too optimistic about it, but it doesn't work everywhere what's going on. And it could get messy. But if there was one player that I would be like, it's Jimmy Garoppolo is that guy. This is not Brett Favre and Aaron Rodgers. It's yeah. not, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo is not out there politicking, saying like, I want to play, put me in. It's a perfect situation. You have a Super Bowl contender. You have two great options. One, if it doesn't work out, you have one that has the experience that the players might want. So it, it's almost up to the players to sort of tell themselves, be patient and let it out. But Jimmy Garoppolo <laughs> redid a deal to stay yeah. there fully knowing what the deal is. And he's the kind of player, I think, the rare player who's like, whatever. Like, I understand the situation. This is the best situation for me. You might use me, you might not. And that makes it okay. And it might not be okay in 31 other locker rooms, but I think it might work yeah. in this one. Yeah, contrary to uh, some reports that came out, I think Jimmy G is a really good teammate. I do think the locker room loves him, which can kind of be more of a problem, I guess. But Jimmy G, he, he's been a good soldier uh, thus far. And he knows, you know, next quarterbacks, they're always in high demand. So he knows next year there'll be a spot for him. Uh, but it, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a weird dynamic. Yeah. The only thing that can make it easier is Trey Lance playing well and, and improving right. and showing improvement every week. And this team, like you said, this is a team that is built to contend for the Super Bowl. This isn't the, you know, the New York Jets or the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like you have top tier players at every position. Fred Warner, Trent Williams, yeah. Nick Bosa, Jimmy Ward, Debo. Like these are top tier players. And um, so he's going to be in a good situation from that standpoint. You got Kyle Shanahan, who's obviously shown he's a great play caller in the league. Um, you got really good receivers out there. And it's a receiver that's kind of, Blown a lot of people away this preseason at training camp. And that's uh, Brandon Ayuk. Yep. I think Brandon Ayuk could sneakily be probably a uh, wide receiver one even over there. Debo is obviously an amazing weapon in the backfield and out at receiver. Obviously, George Kittle as well. But uh, everything I've seen and heard from Bri Brandon Ayuk this preseason, I'll be definitely bullish on his uh, production this year. Do you think the Niners make the playoffs? You know, honestly, I'm going to say no. I, I want to say no. Uh, you know, the easiest route to make the playoffs is obviously winning your division. Yeah. Um, I think the Rams it, will, will, will win that division again. And, uh, you know, I got I got high expectations for the Cardinals as well. You know, every year they kind of start off fast, but kind of finish, you know, telling off. I think Kyler Murray takes a step in that off the field and tangibles leadership wise. Um, obviously, they'll be getting Hopkins back after week mm -hmm. six, I believe. You brought Hollywood Brown over who did some amazing things in college with Kyler Murray at quarterback. So I got J.J. Watt back healthy again. So I, I, I like the Cardinals this year as well. And, I, and once again, this is going to be 
really Trey Lance's first year. And he didn't play much in college. So it's really almost mm-hmm. going to be like his junior or senior year on a college football field, but he's going to be playing against pros. So uh, unfortunately, if I had to make a bet today, I would say the uh, 49ers don't make the playoffs. 49ers miss the playoffs. Brandon Ayuk over 1,000 yards-ish is what you're saying. Wide receiver one out Ooh, there. I, I, I no? would say around that 1,000 yard mark. Okay. Maybe I would say over. I don't know what his prop is right now, but I would say he's in that 900 range. I love it. All right, let's go down to Miami. We're doing all the uh, hot topics here with Darius Butler. Uh, Patriots never love to play there. They lose there pretty much all the time, and now they're opening the yep. season down <laughs> in Miami. They do. It's just it's a very weird thing that happens. Uh, they have to deal with a really creative new head coach. They don't know what they're really getting. And yep. I don't think New England's ready for that speed that Tyreek Hill is going to bring. So Tua, the wild card here in the situation, I have always defended him. I've always had this soft yeah. spot for him. What do you need to see from him early this season to convince you that they are a playoff team or at least ready to contend in that East? You know what? Early, I won't react too much to what he does early in the season, but once again, just progression. Just want to see him continually get better. And I'm a lifelong, I'm a South Floridian, I'm a lifelong Dolphins fan, a Dolph fan, um, and, and Tua may be our guy, right? He, we got, draft him top five, the pick before Justin Herbert, so the pressure's always there on him. But now the team is behind him. Tyreek Hill came over, and he's been singing his praises from day one. Maybe maybe a little too far at times, but singing his praises from day one. They shored up that offensive line. Uh, last year, they, they were at the bottom of the league when you look at 11 personnel. That's basically when you deploy three receivers out there. And obviously, we expect them to have uh, much more of that this year. We're bringing Cedric Wilson over from Dallas. Jalen Waddle going into a second year with Tua. Yeah. And then obviously the 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 amazing uh dynamic weapon that Tyreek Hill is. You know, he's kind of a one-on-one um at that receiver position. So all the pieces are there. Mike McDaniel, this is his first year as an actual play caller. Um, and, and coming from San Francisco, you know, they like to lead and start things off with the run game as well. I think he came out, was quoted a couple of days ago, saying they wanted to run the ball mm. 30 times a game, which I didn't, I wasn't really much a fan of hearing that. <laughs> but um, uh, they'll, they'll be having a lot of speed out there. And two, everything's there for him. And then on the other side of the ball, the defense, Josh Boyer, he was actually my coach when I was in uh, New England. He was my DB coach. Now he's a DC over there. They got a lot of talent over there as well. Xavier Howard, Javon Holland, who will be a superstar at the safety position. And guys, they, they're really multiple, do a lot of things up front and on the back end to confuse quarterbacks. So uh, high, the expectations are really, really high for the Dolphins. Um, high enough for me that... I may even sprinkle something on them to win that division. I know everybody's high on the bills. Talk to me. And I am as well. Josh Allen, Diggs, you know, you brought Von Miller, though, Von Miller over. You lose Brian Dayball, though, so there, are, there is some question marks there. So I may sprinkle something on uh, the Dolphins winning that division. I, I don't even know what to say. Like, bro, my stage manager <laughs> is like, hey, I'm hey, look, so, I, Is I, that like a Florida thing? Like, are you thinking about this clearly? Are we objective? Like, how? What, no, what, what? no, I'm going to be honest with you. No, there is some bias here. So uh, maybe don't tell me here, but there is some bias. And I've been looking for, like, once again, we've been looking for this type of offense. Aww. Tyree Hill, we've never had a weapon like Tyree Hill in Miami. Nobody saw this coming last year when the year ended that we'll have the cheetah down in Miami. So, yeah, my expectations are way up here. Uh, so I'm there. I wouldn't I'm say, happy. I wouldn't advise you to tell me because the Bills they are that deal this year but yeah. um, I love the Dolphins as well they're super overhyped quickly you keep talking about the speed and Tyreek what do you make of this narrative that's been out there the entire offseason since that deal went down that Tua can't get the ball to Tyreek so what's the point what do you make of that uh, much, much ado about nothing uh, Tua can <laughs> throw the ball you know and Tyreek Hill he's not just a guy who just you got to throw in the ball 60 yards down the field you know he, he can kill you with crossing routes slants screens, um, speed sweeps. Like, it's just so many things that you have to plan and prepare for as a defensive player, as a defensive coordinator yeah. when 10 is on the field. And it's, it's things like you see certain – you see speed every week. It's the NFL. But that Tyreek Hill speed is something completely different. And, uh, you know, Patrick Mahomes will miss it. Uh, obviously, I, the Chiefs will be okay. Mahomes, Andy Reid, Eric bien they'll be all right. They'll be good. But to have a weapon like that for Tua, it's just going to open up the field for Waddle, Gasecki, 
Wilson, Moster, and all these other you guys. You are obsessed so, with the Dolphins. I love really, it. Really, really excited. I'm all all chips in on the Miami Dolphins. I'm this excited year. that Fans you hit. Up. I'm excited that you hit me with a much ado about another Shakespeare out of Darius Butler this morning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got range, baby. I got range. <laughs> up and Adams. All right, quickly, we're gonna go through some of the games, uh, the big matchups. Week one, the NFL season starts tomorrow. I'm so excited. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go to the AFC Steelers, Bengals. What do you got, Mr. Trubisky? Starting. Will the Steelers be able? to get something done? They'll compete. They'll compete. <laughs> um, I got the Bengals winning this one. Uh, I, I would never, it's, nice it's tough to, to bet it. against Mike Tomlin and the Steelers team. They're always going to come out prepared. He named Mitch the starter. You can't doubt him there. Weapons on the outside. Obviously, Najee Harris is a weapon in the backfield. Defense is all, it's always Blitzburg out there in PA. So um, they'll compete, but I got the Bengals. A lot of firepower, and they got better this offseason as well. All right, revenge game, which might be overplayed, but I'm here for it. Baker, of course, going up against Miles Garrett and company. Uh, he is getting the start. So when it comes to playing a former team, who has the advantage? Is it the quarterback who's familiar with the defense, or is it the coach? In this case, Mr. Stefanski. Uh, you know, it's situations are situational, but uh, I think Baker, <laughs> he's going to be fired up. Uh, but I got the Browns, actually. I got the Browns in this one. Um, just that team. And I like, I love Jacoby Brissett. You know, he's a guy who's been around for a while. Um, and I, he's, this whole offseason, he's kind of been preparing. The Browns have been preparing to have him start at least a few games. He'll be starting at least the first 11 games. So he'll be prepared. The game plan will be tailored for him. Nick Chubb, Kareem Hump in the backfield, invested a lot of money into that talent in the offensive line. Great defense as well. Um, Baker Mayfield, I think, will still be figuring things out the early yeah. portion of the season. So I got the Browns in this one. Christian McCaffrey's healthy. I think the Panthers are going to the playoffs. I like the Panthers a lot. If he stays healthy, and that's, you know, that's a big if. Yeah, number two total defense. Like, how if, if, if he stays healthy, how good does Baker even have to be? Not that great. And DJ Moore will catch... You know, a ton of rocks for him for over a thousand yards, no matter who's throwing his way. So I'm excited about the Panthers. Uh, Chiefs at Cardinals, great offensive matchup. I love this. You know, I love fantasy football. What do you got on this one? I think a lot of points would be scored. Um, I got the Chiefs in this one. I got the Chiefs in this one. And Patrick Mahomes, he's one of those guys that I feel like everyone this offseason went out of their way to kind of add some fuel to his fire. Uh, one of the most talented players that we've ever seen touch the field. Um, once again, brilliant play callers. Um, they went and invested, uh, got MVS from Green Bay, you drafted Scott Moore. Um, you just got Travis Kelsey is still there, who's a top probably seven, eight receiving weapon period on the offensive side of the ball. Um, with some moving parts on defense, obviously Cardinals will be missing D-Hop for these first few weeks, mm -hmm. so I got the Chiefs in this one. Bills at Rams, I cannot believe this game is tomorrow. We have been waiting and waiting and waiting. What are you looking at in this game? Who do you think comes out on top? Is here, finally made it. I can't believe this game is tomorrow either. And I also can't believe that the Super Bowl champs are underdogs in this one. Mm. I got the Rams in this one. Uh, you know, I think the Bills will miss Tredavious White. Um, got some young guys that will be starting out there at cornerback, going against the Sean McVay offense. Matt Stafford, Cooper Cup be on the, on the same page their second year together. Um, Allen Robinson coming over as well. Uh, McVay does a lot of things that make you uh, think and kind of have a little hesitation as a defensive player, as a D-back. So I think the Bills will struggle with that. Josh Allen and that offense, obviously, they're going to be amazing. And the Bills defense is very good as well. But young corners on the outside, I think uh, Sean McVay, Rookies, Cooper yeah. Cup, yeah, Stafford and Cole will kind of have their way. I got the Rams in this one, straight up. I love the Bills. So much hype about them, but that secondary is their glaring hole, right? And I'm, I'm, I, Tredavious White, one of my favorites, but he's got to be out there. Or Cooper Cup's going to have 150 yards, 200 yards in his first game in 24 hours here in L.A. <laughs> Quickly, Jalen yeah. Ramsey, you know DBs. I got to give. I see the best in the game right now. He's the best. You know, he did what he does. And then now that he goes and plays on the inside as well, and he's a slot defender, um, he can blitz, he can tackle, he can cover, obviously. Um, I would definitely have him in that conversation for, um, you know, the best in the game. Uh, before I go, I wasn't kidding that you are a Formula One enthusiast, maybe expert yeah. even. You are so engaged, in fact, that you watch the qualifying runs. I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Who do you like this weekend? You're like a sick pup when it comes to F1. Uh, I'm sick. Yeah, <laughs> clearly. <laughs> Who do you like this weekend in Italy, I think? Yep, Italian Grand Prix. I see you. The, the Tafosi will be in full force out there. Ferrari, obviously, that's their home. Um, and, and Ferrari has done great things with their car, but they've had a lot of mix-ups on strategy and leadership, I would say, on when the Grand Prix actually comes about. But it's hard to bet against Max Verstappen. 
and Red Bull. You know, he's been the best driver on the grid this year. They have the best car on the grid this year. And their management. I mean, you know, it's football, you got to adjust. You come in with a game Absolutely. plan that you have to adjust and execute on the fly. And Red Bull does that better than anybody else this year, at least. So, um, you know, Max is the easy bet here. And once again, it, you can always bet on something going into qualifying and then obviously at the race as well. But I got Max and Red Bull winning. They're running away with the Constructors Championship and the Drivers Championship right now. So, I mean, that's that's an easy bet right now. I They're like know. inevitable this year. I don't know what you said, but I'm here for it. <laughs> you, you are an expert in everything football and F1. Listen to your man-to-man podcast. It is amazing. We will have you on in a little bit. Big Dolphins fan, Darius Butler. Thank Huge. you, bud. So Appreciate good to have you. Jay. you.